is called sufficiency that there is a provision within the dealings of God with men that men can be engraced they can be empowered as human and frail as we are that we can tap into a system by the intelligence of the spirit where we are able to always rise to the occasion never disappointing when you understand what I'm teaching you tonight, you will be able to run any organization. You will know where good people come from. You will know where resources come from. You will know why things never fail in the hands of certain people. It's not because they are necessarily extraordinary. They have found a system in the spirit that they can draw to their space all the resources needed as far as their excelling is concerned. If you don't know this, you will keep visions that will die in your presence. You will age and watch those visions never come to pass because the wherewithal, the skill, the ability, the spiritual technology to attract the requisite resources for kingdom assignment, you may not have. And this is why God is helping us tonight. In the name of Jesus, may your eyes be opened. Welcome back to our channel. Today's video, we are going to be looking at a very powerful sermon by Apostle Joshua Selman. Watch this video and God will bless you. He talks about the mysteries in the kingdom regarding divine provision, the daily bread provision. God bless you as you watch. Most believers do not know how to access the needed resources to live a victorious Christian life and to fulfill their God-given assignment. Let's define sufficiency. What does the Bible refer to as sufficiency? A few definitions. Number one, having enough to achieve a goal or to fulfill a need or to satisfy a need. Having enough to achieve a goal and to satisfy a need is called sufficiency. Another definition to sufficiency the capacity to always rise to the occasion, never disappointing. The capacity, I like this. This is my definition. The capacity to always rise to the occasion, never disappointing, is called sufficiency. That there is a provision within the dealings of God with men, that men can be engraced, they can be empowered as human and frail as we are, that we can tap into a system by the intelligence of the spirit where we are able to always rise to the occasion, never disappointing. Write this down, please. Fulfilling your days and fulfilling your God-given assignment will require abundant provision of resources. Fulfilling your days and fulfilling your God-given assignment will require abundant provision of resources. Resources here are, are not limited to material resources at all. Fulfilling your days and fulfilling your God-given assignment require abundant provision of resources. You have that down? Consistency in any area of your life, as far as advancement and impact is concerned, is also a product of abundant supplies. Consistency in any area of your life, as far as advancement and impact is concerned, is a product of abundant supplies of resources. Is someone learning consistency there are times where you can be traveling from one nation to the other and either because say of the the distance the aircraft can land in a place that was not part of your destination to refuel are we together because whilst you are flying the jet fuel or the aircraft fuel just depletes to a point where it's no longer safe now, nothing is wrong with the aircraft on its own, but because of the distance, say you are flying to say Australia or America, that's quite a significant distance even in the air. Usually, most aircrafts will stop somewhere for a few minutes to refuel. That means when you see consistency, when you see people that it's as if they don't mark time, it's as if they don't stop, it's as if they don't get tired, they have mastered the art of receiving their daily daily bread daily bread in ministry daily bread in business daily bread in leadership 
One more time, someone pray a sincere prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I've had the honor of relating with a few fathers of faith in this nation and other nations of the world. And sometimes I am, I am amazed at their level of consistency, the stamina to continue. And it looks like for every time there is a need or there is a project, they have done business with God in a way that they never seek to lack. They needed help per vision, per project. Whether it is a building project, whether it's an expansion project, whether it's growth in the spirit, whether it is influence. And for a long time, I wondered, is it, is it because they know people? Is it because they've stayed long until God opened my eyes to see to it that for every assignment, every believer and every mandate, there is a design by the intelligence of God that you run your life on this mysterious supply called daily bread. How do you know you are enjoying daily bread? By the sufficiency it provides for you to not stop. There is no reason to stop. Unfortunately, there are many visions that are stunted because they have not learned how to access their daily bread. Daily bread. Daily bread. There is a big difference between two, say, ministers of the gospel, genuinely called, genuinely anointed, but one can stay stunted and limited, whereas another can make strategic kingdom advancement. The difference may not be anointing, I tell you sincerely. It may just be that one has found by mercy this system of supply. And you find out that for everything you want to do, you will always find help. For everything you want to do, you will always find men. For everything you want to do. Have you seen those kinds of things? When you carry this kind of grace, the day you have a keyboard is the day that person is marrying to relocate. Before he leaves, another one arrives at church. You'll be wondering, how come good people seem to come? This is a mystery I'm teaching you. It's called our daily bread. There is a system that always ensures that you are never bankrupt of the resources that makes for kingdom assignment. Do you understand this teaching? This is very important. Finances, there are people like that. They look frail, but let, let them just announce that there is an assignment. You will hear that a mysterious person somewhere signed 500,000, 1 million dollars, and you are wondering, what is this? Where did the money come from? Our sufficiency is not of ourselves. Our sufficiency is of God, who is learning already, who has made us. Show me a believer who understands the mystery you are learning tonight and I show you one person whose downfall you will never see as far as progress is concerned. And this is not limited to ministry as we know. Show me a business that has found that and you will see. I saw this in the life of Daniel. How many of you know that when governments change, tides also change. There are people who excel so well under a certain government but once the government changes, unfortunately, you will have to go also. Your favor goes, but not Daniel. Daniel reigned to, it didn't matter what king, it didn't matter what they believed, it didn't matter what they agreed on. As for Daniel, they had to say, no, no, there's something on this man, that there is an excellent spirit. Excellent spirit. They couldn't do without him. Nobody could remove him. Do you know? When, when you read Daniel chapter 3, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I wonder why Daniel was not there. Daniel was not there. And yet he was there in Babylon. But the trouble was with the three Hebrew boys. Do you know what I learned? There are certain levels of influence, bar when God leaves you to, some troubles will not come to you again. Daniel was still in Babylon. The three guys that were going to be victims, there's no record that Daniel went on sabbatical or left Babylon. He was there right from chapter one. So why were three young boys victims and yet someone who was one of the presidents? There is a way God lifts you beyond the reach of certain troubles. There are certain battles, what you need is not deliverance. What you need is to be lifted out of it. How many of you have seen a pilot praying to cross a mountain? How many of you have seen a pilot praying to leap over a wall? All he needs to do is to lift that aircraft far beyond every mountain, far beyond every wall. Let me speak to someone in the name of Jesus. May my God lift you. 
that certain realities will not be found around your life again. Certain troubles will not be found around your life again because you would have been marvelously helped by God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Please be seated. Hmm. Please be seated. Daniel was there and yet trouble did not meet him. And there were some sincere boys. I can tell you this. We know by the integrity of scripture that Daniel would not have bowed to Nebuchadnezzar's statue. Question, where was he? Because the story still continues. The man didn't bow, yet he was there. All that was required for his excelling, for his remaining. That means when you find believers taunted as far as fulfilling their kingdom assignment is concerned, among the many explanations, it may be that they have not learned. They have not learned how to receive their daily bread. I hope you know the concept of daily bread was not an apostle's idea. It was Jesus himself. When Jesus is teaching you how to live, you pay attention. He says, when you pray, in all your asking, don't forget to ask this. Give us this day. The Father is not tired of hearing. He designed the system himself. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us at this level our daily bread. When we rise to a higher level, give us at that level our daily bread. The capacity to always rise to the occasion, never disappointing. I have learned from the study of scripture, I have learned by the help of the Spirit that there are four resources. Please listen. When the Bible talks about sufficiency, as far as destiny, actualization, and kingdom advance is concerned, I have broken these realms of resources into four. And I give you a guarantee by the integrity of God's word that anyone who will press to have to understand the system that governs the arrival and the maintenance of these resources will be an indomitable spiritual personality. The word of God for starters has equal value in every nation. There are no sentiments. The word of God is an equalizer to any destiny. No matter how disadvantaged you are, once the word of God is introduced to your life, that equalizing factor has come. Now listen, listen, listen carefully. By reason of our natural or geographical um, condition, the truth is that we are not the same. Economically, with all due respect, are we together? When you bring in things like culture, when you bring in things like family background, when you bring things like social status, when you bring things like finances, it immediately separates people into different cadres. But the moment you introduce the word of God to any life, it comes as a remedy for whatever was missing. That if you know how to draw out the treasures that are hidden within it, it can bring, it can equalize and stabilize your life. I came from a family with curses and yokes and it seems like nobody can make it. You are right until the word of God comes. From the day the word of God arrives you stop that excuse because the basis for deliverance has come the basis for lifting has come the basis for restoration has come he sent forth his word the question is where did the word go to the word did not just come to them the word came to their situation also God can send the word to a person God can send the word to a situation are we together So there are four resources as far as sufficiency is needed. And every time God mandates that you serve his purposes at any level, these are the areas where you are going to have to contend with the spirit to master. Sufficiency in these areas and sufficiency on this wise becomes for you a secret of living an excelling life. Are you ready now? The first dimension of resources that are needed as far as your daily bread is concerned are called spiritual resources. Spiritual resources. The first dimension of resources needed. And there are two of them, essentially. Number one, the first and the greatest spiritual resource you need is called divine presence. Divine presence. Divine presence. Exodus chapter 33, 13 to 16. Give us this day our daily bread. That which keeps us going. 
that which keeps us running that which makes for our never stopping that which makes for our never going down spiritual resources and that the first and the greatest of every spiritual resource that you have to contend for is called divine presence please give it to us we learn from Moses now he's praying now therefore I pray thee if I have found grace in thy sight show me now thy way that I may know thee that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people verse 14 and he said oh may he say concerning you he said my presence not my angels my presence shall go with you and as a result I will give thee rest my presence shall go with you ladies and gentlemen I'm showing you what separates men from men what separates visions from visions it's not necessarily the size of your body. It's the ability to have access to the daily bread. There are mysteries that work with men and produce the kinds of results that you see. One of it is your access to spiritual resources and the greatest of it is divine presence. Now look up please. There are three dimensions of God's presence as revealed in scripture. I have taught you. Number one is called his omnipresence. His ability to be everywhere at the same time. The psalmist said, where can I hide from your presence? Are we together? The highest of, of heavens and the deepest parts of the earth and the seas, he is there. God's ability to be everywhere is called his omnipresence. And let me just digress for a minute to teach you for those of you who may be hearing for the first time that when the Bible calls us partakers of his divine nature I hope you know that it's not every part of God's nature that he gave man there are certain dimensions of God's nature and glory that was not given to man these are the dimensions of God that brand him as God one of it is omnipresence God did not give man that ability man is not omnipresent number two man is not omniscient man is not all-knowing no we see in part the prophet said and we prophesy in part the most yielded the most studious is still limited we see in part only God is all-knowing and then omnipotence all-powerful no man has been given the ability to share in that name called El Shaddai. It's a name that is exclusive to God. There are names God calls himself and he also calls the saints. For instance, God is light. He also says we are the light of the world. He's not ashamed to share that with us. But when it has to do with omnipotence, I have spoken once and twice have you heard that power exclusively belongs to the Lord. Are you learning now? So when you say we are partakers of his divine nature, it is not every part of his nature you were given. That is the reason why our dominion is not absolute dominion. Our dominion is shared dominion, is derived from our relationship with him. We cannot do without him, but he can do without us. You see the difference now? We have to depend on him for the continuous flow of the life, the power that comes. I am the vine. He didn't say we are the vine. In John 15, he said, we are, we will see a whole tree, but let me tell you the parts so that you know what you are and what you are not. He says, I am the vine. And then he says, you are the branches, the fruit bearing part of that vine. The vine does not need the branches. You can cut the branches. Another one will come out, but you cut it away and drop that branch. It dies and it withers. Isn't this powerful? Give us this day our daily bread. He's not just talking about food. That there are spiritual resources a man can master how to outsource on the journey. And it makes your journey worthwhile. You will continue to leap from one level of victory to the other. Mysterious to both you and those watching you. And that the secret is that you have learned how to draw within your space spiritual resources. The first and the greatest of them being divine presence. Your holy presence living in me and I am desperate for you.
chapter 16 and verse 20 here's what the bible says mark 16 20 please give it to us it says and they went forth and preached everywhere but here was their secret they learned the key to sufficiency they went as ordinary men started as fishermen but the lord walking with them not in them walking with them i'm teaching you that there are three dimensions to god's presence number one is called his only presence he's everywhere that reality has no effect on you because even where demons are the presence of god is there number two i call it his emmanuel dimension his ability to be in the midst of his people only where two or three are gathered whether they take advantage of that presence or not it says where two or three are gathered in my name i'm there in their midst the third is called his shekinah it's called his manifested presence not his presence his manifested presence the presence is there in a way that you must acknowledge it and it has come for your profiting his manifested presence so when Moses was saying, if your presence, the word is Shekinah, if your manifested presence, revealed presence, he was always there with them, but his manifested presence, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And verse 15, he says, leave it, leave it please, verse 15. If thy presence go not with me, he said, I prefer to stay in one place. Because it is cheaper to stay in one place than to sojourn without this resource of your presence. No matter how intelligent you are, no matter how vast in knowledge, if you do not secure the sufficiency of his presence, you will fail in the journey. You will see how frail knowledge is in the presence of the realm of the spirit. That there are certain levels of things we think we know that only find their value within the earth realm. Once you are exposed to spiritual realities, your knowledge will stand frail and impotent. Are we together? Spiritual resources and the Lord walking with them. Let me show you a scripture. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Peter was speaking in the house of Cornelius, the salvation that would now come to the Gentiles. And he made a profound statement. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. The last line is the secret. For God was with him. Let me tell you the truth. When God is in you by the in the person of the Holy Spirit that does an inner work within you to prepare you but there is a dimension for the journey it's not God in you it's God with you most people do not know the secrets of carrying the manifested presence of God I learned this mystery in the life of a man called e, I mean A.W. Tozer I read a book the practice of divine presence the practice of his presence that a man can carry you can literally the Holy Ghost can be in you and it looks like you are not even saved but when that Shekinah that glory rests upon you there is something it does to you that it would do for you the same thing it did for the rod of Aaron that even though it did not have root it still budded there is something that happens to a man when you pay the price in righteousness to be a worthy host of divine presence i have seen what divine presence can do are we together now divine presence you carry divine presence as a man of god you will walk wonders by the spirit of god i can tell you divine presence secures favor divine presence can open doors there are many things you will not need to pray for if you carry divine presence the Lord walking with them walking with them no wonder some of them went somewhere and spirits and devils were just crying how about Jesus have you come to destroy us before our time divine presence manifested presence not just omnipresence and let me tell you this there are two keys I wish I was teaching I, I, you, you, I wanted to listen to my teaching I've done several teachings around the presence of God and encounters right we considered Zephaniah the Lord in the midst of his people is mighty but there are two keys that I've learned in my walk with God 
that can help a man secure the manifested presence of God in your life number one is the depth of your love for God the depth of your passion 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 for God John chapter 14 please and verse 21 John 14 let's hurry up and verse 21 he that keepeth my commandments he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father read with me koinonia and I will love him and will manifest myself to him will manifest myself to him I'm praying that we not only become carriers of knowledge but carriers of that divine presence that you stand close to someone and the person does not even know what is happening chains are breaking you are not talking yet you brought an atmosphere you brought tremendous energy presence are we together as a preacher when you stand on stage what you are serving is beyond an information you are also giving people access to the presence that you came with from your secret place there are many things they should receive beyond the words they are hearing there is a spirit activity that must go beyond your speakings you may be teaching on anything for that matter and yet what they are receiving there is a witness in their spirit that i am getting more than what this man is saying now their minds cannot process it because it is spirit transaction it will take a while for them to see that something was deposited in all you're getting don't just get knowledge contend for presence the depth of your love for god that is expressed in your devotion not empty i love you not empty i love you consecration and devotion are two keys that connect to love devotion they follow wholly not half-heartedly not one leg in one leg out wholly and then number two the second key that secures divine presence is obedience when I sent you not when you left not when you wanted to go when I sent you lackest thou anything including the presence that backed you there are many people doing things God did not ask them to do and God will not back what he did not command if you are obeying a lie you are still disobeying mm. divine presence ladies and gentlemen I have learned this with all humility as a secret I have seen what the presence of God can do you see every spirit born again or not regenerate or not regenerated or not any spirit can detect the presence of God so you can stand close to someone and not know why you want to bless him and not know why you want to help him it's not always about wisdom they are carrying something that is compelling blessings from your spirit this is what you can carry as a man of God that will draw people who do not know you they will travel distances and come they cannot tell what is pulling them it's called presence divine presence you can you can copy a man of God salmon but you don't copy presence you can say exactly what was said and not see the effect exactly same scripture same preaching same emphasis same example but there will be no life because there was no presence can i tell you the truth when you carry presence you will save yourself the pressure of always trying to say something new you will focus on being fresh presence is responsible for freshness the food that you eat biologically from the day you were born till today they are countable you can write them on a paper yet you have not died but every time you eat the reason why you survive is because you eat freshness not necessarily newness listen let me tell you why as men of God when we prepare sermons we still take the time to pray and brood over it because a good sermon without the presence factor will fall on deaf ears it remains as a lecture no matter how intelligent let me advise you as a man of God after preparing your notes place it on the ground and lie there in prayer let your presence that presence factor you are preparing for a miracle service or a crusade and all you bought was 
clothes and tie, you will be disappointed in a very brutal way. That your disappointment will be a lesson for many people. This is what a lot of people do. Don't be beguiled by all this protocol that escorts. No. Even those who practice witchcraft know. They stay first. There is an incubation. It's called marination. Women will understand. You put meat and just leave it in a sauce for hours and something happens. There is, there is that marination and from it you come out. And there are things you will not have to say again. The more you carry the presence, the less the noise. The less the noise. But the louder the sound, I tell you, the louder the sound, the sound of impact, the sound of deliverance. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our Blessed is he who comes in the name of our Blessed is he who comes in the name of our I will manifest myself. Man of God, lend this as a secret. Carry presence. Don't just carry Bible. Carry presence carry presence don't just carry information the presence of God be marinated in that presence soak in that glory be rubbed up in that glory and come out that's where the word baptizo comes you are immersed you have become one with that glory you come out from that atmosphere sufficiency presence listen there are many things you will not look for if you find the presence of God Second Chronicles 25, 26 and verse 5. Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5. Presence. Let's hurry up. We have a lot to do. Let's read together. And he sought God. First four words. And he sought. And he sought. He sought God. Not things. God. Not a name. God. Not power. God. Not a platform. God. Not a preaching opportunity. He sought God. In the days of Zechariah, who had the understandings of the vision of God, read with me, Koinonia. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Who makes men prosper? God. One more time, who makes men prosper? God. Make no mistakes about it. When you see anyone lifted, blessed, adorned with glory, God is behind it. God made him. There is a name God is called, He's called a maker. He does not just make the heavens and the earth alone. He is a maker of men, the maker of ministries, the maker of destinies. And that same God is making someone's life today, turning you to Beulah and Hephzibah, making beauty out of your life. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Please sit down. The first spiritual resource you need, we have to hurry, is called divine presence. I have to stop. The next spiritual resource that you need is called supernatural power you need power <laughs> you need power my goodness you need power genuine power genuine power apostolic power genuine power for signs and wonders genuine power to command the supernatural genuine power that makes your words like the words of god genuine power that produces results genuine power that opens gates genuine power that closes other gates many many people are sincere but they've not stayed with god to carry genuine power Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed anointed even the word needed to be anointed even the word needed to be anointed the word without the anointing was impotent how God anointed the word with the Holy Ghost and with power and with power and with power and with power what is power the force that compels compliance the force that compels compliance if there is one thing I've learned about Satan is that he's a stubborn spirit. It doesn't matter what God has said. Once power has not been introduced, you are joking. 
God said, I am, I am the head and not the tail. That statement does not scare spirits. But let power come in. Power. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. It says it is through the greatness of thy power that the enemies will submit themselves. Psalm 66 and verse 3. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. You are not the first person to come from a family with charms and yokes. We all came from there. When you see it not work, it's not because it cannot work. It was stopped. Power. The end of any argument, bar, is when power comes. Genuine power. Man of God, you need power. You have a message, but tarry ye until ye be endued not with another sermon. Be endued with power. Yes, sir. You shall receive power. I taught you already, but you shall receive power. Meaning you can reject it. Many have rejected it. And they told themselves, I'm not a preacher. Power is not for preachers. It is a spiritual resource that empowers you for the journey. You shall receive power. So when he says, give us this day our daily bread, the first spiritual resource you need to continue to remain, to advance. When you combine presence and power, my God, you have something on your life. You have something on your life. You have something on your life. And I'm praying for someone in the name of Jesus. The grace to stay. You know the secret of spiritual power? There are many factors. But let me tell you the truth. One authentic pathway to spiritual power is to engage the mystery of prayer with fasting. Authentic spiritual power. Prayer with fasting. In the presence of light, you have found the combo. Prayer with fast, not prayer and fasting. If you pray and don't fast, well, that's fine. But if you fast and don't pray, you only took yourself to a point of hunger. Many people say they are fasting and just wake up 10 minutes. They peel the orange they would take by 6, by 5, 45, and that's all they are doing. And by 6 on the dot, without one second added, they start to suck the orange. And well, the mercy of God is there, but you didn't fast. No. There is a fast commanded, I tell you, that produces power, genuine power, that you lock yourself and pray. Not pray and browse, not pray and call, not pray and, and, and watch part movie, part this thing. You shut down and pray for the purpose of edification, no prayer point. When others are snoring their destiny, you are generating energy, making contact with genuine power. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Someone shout power. Please be seated. Give us this day our daily bread. I'm showing you the mystery of sufficiency. And can I tell you, the order of your pursuit matters. Your spiritual pursuit must be the greatest and the highest in terms of the energy you give your pursuit. There are others like you'll be learning, but in order of priority. When you want to embark on any spiritual journey, ministry, life, business, your assignment, please, in all you're getting, if you must get daily bread, you must invest in the things that keep divine presence. You must invest in the things that keep divine power. Don't just say it arrived yesterday. No. Give us this day. That means do this day that which brings the daily bread. Give us this day. Um, for those of you who have interacted with the North, when, when, when the Muslims are having their fast, Many times, some of the mosques and the people, they, you know, someone just donates so that they can cook for some of the children who cannot help themselves. How many have seen, have, have seen that kind of thing? And once it's time, they all arrange their plates and then they serve them and they go. And by the next day, they wash their plates again. Sometimes you see the children hungry and they are just waiting impatiently until it's time. They come this day to receive this day. If you don't do the things daily that keep the presence daily, that keep the power daily, you will wake up like Samson and find out that there's no power again. Assumption is costly in this journey of destiny. 
you only pray when you are going for a conference or you only pray study the bible like at, at the dear sister who gave her testimony you see honestly admitting that before the school of ministry she would not even open her bible she would not even pray obtain grace to love the lord more than your necessary food secure divine presence secure divine presence through the depth of your devotion for spiritual things obtain grace to invest in the place of prayer obtain grace to invest in the place of the word until you contact genuine power genuine power every time i have the opportunity to watch videos of the patriarchs in modern history sometimes i just find myself tears just running i may not be crying but sometimes i say lord have mercy on us where did we miss this thing i mean this guy is kind these men carried power they really carried power if you've not watched enough of their videos, you may think people are exaggerating. But when God grants you access to rare materials, I remember watching one of these men of God, I think it was A.A. Allen. They brought someone who had polio, and it was as if he was stretching cloth that you are going to iron. He just stretched that guy and told him to stand up, and that was it. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Number two, the second level of resources you must press to have is called intellectual resources. Write it down, please. Write it down and let's make progress. The resources of knowledge, the resources of wisdom, the resources of understanding, intellectual resources. Intellectual resources. Proverbs chapter 24, please. From verse 3 and 4. Proverbs 24, 3 and 4. Intellectual resources. Give us this day our daily bread. Through wisdom, my Bible says, Amplified, please. Amplified gives us a broader perspective as to that scripture. Through skillful and godly wisdom, it says, is a house, a life, a home, a family built. And by understanding, it is established on sound and good foundation. Next verse. It says, by knowledge shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. The Bible says there is treasure and oil to be desired in the dwelling of the wise. There is treasure. Thank you for watching this powerful video. I hope you are blessed. I pray you don't just be the hearer of the world, but equally the doer of the world. God bless you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.